In this video, we're going to look at how living things can be grouped based on their external features. We will develop a system to help us identify the main groups of animals that we find in the sea. This is called taxonomy. Sponges. They have a body made of millions of tiny glass-like structures called spicules. Inside sponges are tiny hairs that rapidly wiggle back and forth, creating current that draws water in through pores, then blows it out other pores elsewhere on the body, as shown by this harmless dye. So, for our description of sponges, we can say that they have pores and spicules. Jellyfishes, corals and sea anemones belong to a group called Cnidaria. The sea is silent which is a word that means nettle, as they have microscopic harpoons in their tentacles that inject venom into their prey. The tentacles then pull the food into their body through the cnidarian's mouth. So to describe cnidarians, we can say that they have stinging tentacles. Sea urchins, sea stars and sea cucumbers belong to a group of animals called echinoderms, which means spiky skin. You will notice echi is in the word echidna, as they are spiky too. So does this mean echidnas and sea urchins are in the same group? No, because another thing echinoderms have are sticky tube feet. Echidnas don't have these. So we can say echinoderms have spiky skin and sticky tube feet. Let's review the taxonomy we've done so far. Sponges have pores and spicules. Cnidarians have stinging tentacles. Echinoderms have spiky skin and sticky tube feet. What about crustaceans such as lobsters, crabs and shrimps? Some of them have spiky skin, but they don't have sticky tube feet. Look closely at their legs. They are made up of segments with several joints in between. They belong to a larger group called arthropods. Arthro means jointed and pod means foot or leg. So we can say arthropods, including crustaceans, have jointed legs. Now what about mollusks? This is a very difficult group to classify based on their features. The simple answer is mollusks have a mantle and this sets them apart from all other animals. The word mantle means hood or cape, and it can be clearly seen here wrapped around the head of the octopus. But for many other mollusks, you wouldn't see the mantle, as it's from the mantle that the shell grows out of. Let's look for some other features that help us put mollusks into a group. Many of them have a head and a muscular foot. Sea snails, sea slugs and chitons have a muscular foot and a head. Many mollusks have a shell growing out of their body, now be mindful that you don't confuse the feature of having a shell with hermit crabs. Hermit crabs don't grow their shell. They move into an empty one that's left behind by a dead mollusk. Some mollusks have two shells. They are called bivalves, with bi meaning two and valve meaning shell. So we can say mollusks have a mantle or a head with a muscular foot or one or more shells that they grow out of their body. How do we separate fish, sharks, skates and stingrays from the other animals that we've seen so far? For one thing, this group of animals don't have a skeleton inside their body, while these animals do. In fact, scientists separate these two groups based on a particular part of the skeleton, the spine. This is part of the spine from a whale. The bone is called a vertebra. If you have more than one vertebra, you pronounce them vertebrae. So you have 33 vertebrae down your spine. So scientists call this group vertebrates. All the animals in this group do not have vertebrae, so we call them invertebrates. But remember in this video, we're trying to group animals based on their visible features, and you can't see vertebrae in these animals when they're alive. So let's choose something else. If we look at this fish, we can see that its fins have bony spines. These are called rays. Shark fins are thick and fleshy and don't have those rays. 
Also, look at the gill slits for the sharks. They have more than one, whereas ray fin fishes only have one gill slit either side of their head. So how do we separate skates and stingrays? Skates and rays are flat animals with a long tail. Skates have thorns on their tail and usually dorsal fins. Stingrays don't have fins on their tail and have a sharp pointy barb. So we can say ray fin fishes have one gill opening either side of their body and bone rays in their fins. We can say sharks have more than one gill opening either side and fleshy fins. Skates are flat animals with a long tail with thorns and dorsal fins. And stingrays are flat animals with a long tail with a sharp barb. Now what about mammals, such as seals and cetaceans? Cetaceans are what we call whales, dolphins and porpoises. One of the many features mammals have in common is fur or hair, and this is something clearly visible on seals, especially their whiskers. Hair is not that easy to see in cetaceans, so let's use something else for them. Cetaceans obtain their oxygen from the air, so need to come to the surface to breathe. If we compare the skull of an orca to this plastic model of a human skull, we can see that the cetacean nostrils are much higher up and further back in the head than our skull. From the outside, we see this is their blowhole through which they breathe. We can say for mammals that they have fur or hair, especially for seals, or a blowhole, so that includes whales, dolphins and porpoises. Now we have a list of features that we can use to classify a marine animal. So we call this list our taxonomy of marine animals. Let's test it to see if we can identify this animal. When you use a taxonomy, it's a bit like playing the game of guess who. Does it have a body made of spicules with pores? No. Does it have stinging tentacles? No. Does it have spiky skin and sticky tube feet? No. Does it have multiple gill slits and fleshy fins? No. Does it have fins with bony rays? Yes. This is a ray fin fish. Now our taxonomy doesn't tell us which ray fin fish this is. We would have to go to another taxonomy for all the different types of ray fin fishes but I can tell you that this is a female Shaw's cowfish. That concludes our look at how marine animals can be grouped on the basis of their observable features. There are many other groups of animals we could have looked at. For example, notice we didn't cover birds. What observable features do you think we could have used to describe them? Also, there are many other features we could have used to describe the animals that we looked at in this video. You might like to come up with your own taxonomy to identify these animals. Then you could take it to the seashore or marine discovery centre to test it.